Toronto's mayor, Rob Ford, says he has done nothing worse than anyone else on Toronto City Council. He's just the only one who's been honest enough to come clean. The mayor and his brother sat down for an interview late this afternoon after what was a remarkable day in council, where Ford was stripped of even more powers. The mayor talked about his drug use and his drinking, and then made this promise. Are you like off alcohol now? Okay. You're done with alcohol. Finished. You'll never drink again. Finished. You know, about a come to Jesus moment, if you want to call it that. Well, if that would have made a difference at all, it came too late for what happened today. In the end, the vote at council to strip Toronto Mayor Rob Ford of more of his powers was arguably the least interesting thing that happened. The CBC's Joanna Romiliotis has the full story for us. Joanna. Peter, it was another bizarre day at Toronto City Hall. You can count on it. Wait for it and it will come. The often incomprehensible drama that is the Rob Ford reality show. Today, an unprecedented council meeting call to strip a disgraced mayor of most of his budget and his powers quickly turned into a showdown between the Ford brothers and pretty much everyone else. Rather than this kangaroo court, I'm getting to my question, thank you. Okay, Councillor Ainsley, you got your own issues. While Councillor Doug Ford took his first stab at council and took aim at a councillor who has admitted to impaired driving, the mayor gleefully mimics someone drinking and driving. Mayor Ford, please stop disrupting. Schoolyard antics turned to bullying when minutes later the Fords took on the hecklers in the gallery. The mayor sending his security guard to take pictures in an apparent act of intimidation. And then the headline image of the day. Ford ramming into a counselor after rushing, he later claimed, to his brother's aid. I apologize to anyone that I um, accidentally hit when my brother was in an altercation over there. But when the chaos subsided, Ford was heard uttering this while looking in his brother's direction. No, oh, kill him. Who he wanted to kill isn't clear. You know what? They jumped up. They don't want anything to do with it. What is obvious, the Fords are on the warpath, debuting a new show calling for a snap election to let voters decide. But the man dubbed the Teflon mayor may be losing ground, even in strongholds like his own riding, where many still back him. There is a sense, enough. He is not a person that I want representing me. I feel sorry for the fellow. I also feel sorry for Toronto to be represented by a person acting the way he has Back at City Council, there was little sympathy too. You, sir, have lost the ability to lead this city. We've reached the end of our options. It's come to this. But Ford seemed unfazed, often looking away while councillors spoke. With Rob Ford, there's no half measures. Mark Tuohy is the mayor's former chief of staff. He says the mayor who refuses to blink probably won't anytime soon. Well, it's fight or flight, and there's nowhere for him to go. I've apologized enough. I've admitted my mistakes. I'm not going to sit here and go on and on and on. Defiant to the end, and definitely strange too. Ford capped the day by comparing today's council meeting to Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. You guys have just attacked Kuwait. Mark my words, friends. This is going to be outright war in the next election. But Ford has already lost a key battle. The majority of council voted today to reduce his budget and his powers. The Fords haven't ruled out challenging that in court. Peter? All right, Joanna, thank you. Joanna Romiliotis just outside Toronto City Hall. The Prime Minister's office weighed in on the Rob Ford story for the first time today, but used the opportunity to attack the Liberal leader. These latest allegations are troubling, the statement said. Our government does not condone illegal drug use, especially by elected officials while in office, including Justin Trudeau, nor do we condone drinking and driving.